Hey, Kevin here from DIYDwarf.com. Today I want to show you my technique to make new wood look like old barn wood, so check this out. Alright, so here's a couple of scrap boards that I'm going to turn into barn wood. Now these are just some old pieces of pine that I had in my scrap pile, but you could do this on pretty much any wood. Now these are fairly new, but you could even use it on older wood. It doesn't really matter. This one does have a little pencil on there from, I guess it was a cut off piece, but that doesn't matter for this sample. But uh, anyway, what I'm going to do to make them look like barnwood is a two step process. So the first thing I need to do is add texture to them to make them look old and weathered. Then I'm going to add color, which has several layers to really make it look believable, like it's been bleached out in the sun for a long time. All right, so like I said, the very first step I need to do next is go ahead and add the texture. And what I'm going to do is put a wire brush in my drill and run it along the grain to really kind of chew up the soft sections of the wood, like the lighter colored ones. And then all of these dark spots are harder, so they'll stay poking up. So it'll give it a really cool texture. Now, I do have a video that explains more about this process, but for this video, I'll just show it real quick. But if you want to go check that video out, I explain a lot more. So let me do that next. All right, so now my boards are textured and I actually did them uh, each separately a little bit different. So this one has a more subtle texture on there. It's actually almost kind of hard to see, but you can hear it. But what I did was I just ran my uh, uh, wire wheel clockwise, okay? And I just went along with the grain. Now in my other video where I explained how to do this, uh, how to add the texture, I was kind of going diagonal against the grain, which really chews it up, but I think it's actually a little more realistic if you actually just follow the grain. All right, so anyway, like I said, I went in one direction spinning the uh, wire brush on this board here. This one here, though, you can see it has a lot more texture going on. Now, this texture was already there. That was just part of the board, but you can just see how much more it's chewed up here. What I did with that one is I went over it with the clockwise motion. Then I reversed the drill counterclockwise, and those wire bristles, I've been using it for a while, so they, they're used to spinning that way, so they all have a slight bend to them. So when I spun them that way, they were really digging into that wood and chewing it up and it gives it a, a lot more weathered looking texture to it. So these will actually both look a little different once I put all the color on them. And you'll notice that this one will look a little bit deeper and it actually has more of a barn wood look. So that's kind of a little trick. You can run your uh, drill both directions if you want to. Now another thing is if you go too long, you'll notice that your board will start to get kind of shiny. I guess somehow it's heating up the wood and it kind of slicks it over. So you gotta be a little careful with that. All right, so anyway, that was the texture. They're, they're both roughed up. And now we just got to add the color, which is not too difficult of a process. It just takes a few layers and you just got to kind of use your eye and, and judgment to determine what looks best. So we'll start working on that next. All right, so the first step of adding color is to actually make a color stain or a color wash. And I have a video that shows how to make this as well. It's super easy. In that video, I was making all kinds of bright colors, pinks and greens, but you can even do blacks and browns. This one here, I'm doing a gray. It's almost like a primer gray. Okay, super, super simple. So anyway, all I got to do is just grab a rag to soak it up and uh, just wipe it on. And it may not look like anything special at first, all right, but uh, you can end up putting two or three coats on there, even four if you had to, and uh, just get to the color you want. Now the trick is that you want it to dry in between coats because that will tell you what it actually looks like. Because when it's wet, sometimes it looks a little darker or sometimes even a little lighter. But uh, anyway, like that right there is a good enough coat for the first time, okay? And then I'll go ahead and coat that one and then let them dry. And then I may end up doing about three or four coats and uh, I'll show you what they look like once I got this first color wash down. All right, so now my color stain has dried and you can see how this board turned out a little bit darker than this one. Like I said, it would. Part of it is this board actually was kind of darker to start with. It had a little more of that orangey look, but also it just has so much more texture that it soaked up a lot of that uh, color wash and deepen the color so you can kind of see the difference between the more subtle texture and the rougher texture now also it really emphasized the like chewed out parts of the wood that was already there when I found the board before I even added texture so that's another little trick you could do is kind of find rougher wood because it'll really make it look like the super old barn wood all right so the second step of adding color is to read the boards and kind of determine where they want dark spots and where they want light spots now if you do a Google image search uh, and you look up barnwood, you notice that some boards are darker than others, but also just on the board itself, there's darker spots and lighter spots. It seems like it's usually around knots 
in rougher sections like this where it would be a lot darker. Okay, same thing over here. You can even see how my color stain was wanting to soak in right there around that knot. And then this one also has the kind of like little gouges there. So those look good dark. So what I'm going to do is just use some regular black acrylic latex paint, like regular house wall paint. And I'm going to take a rag and put some on there, but then I'm going to dab it off so that I don't have too much on there. So it's kind of like dry brushing, but it's dry dabbing. What I'm going to do is just add some around the knots. It won't look great at first, but what you do is you kind of dab and then you wipe it. All right. And then also you can kind of see where there's some lighter spots and the darker spots. I'm going to try to just emphasize these darker spots and let the lighter spots stay as is. And uh, it'll help, you know, make it look a little more real. So let me add some on there and you kind of get an idea of what this should look like. All right, so now all of the black highlights are on there. And you can see this one I emphasized around all that really rough texture, just a little bit on the edge where it was feeling kind of dark. This one did the same thing. I tried to get rid of a lot of the orangey color and overlay with black, and then I just kind of smeared black all over because it was just looking kind of light. So, uh, I mean, they're not very realistic right now, but we still got a little more to go. So next step is now to add some highlights. So I'm using some white paint with just a drop or two of black in there, so it's like a super, super light gray. I'm going to do the same thing, except basically use even less, all right? So you just want to highlight just the really, really, really small areas where you think there might be a little bit of a highlight. So just kind of read the board again. Like this one right here, I feel like right up there, that corner, and then all of this right here needs just a little bit of a highlight. And on this board, kind of the same thing, all these lighter spots, just a little bit. You don't want to go too crazy. It'll be too much. I'll go ahead and go just a little overboard to kind of show you what too much looks like and then I'll show you how you can actually fix that too. All right, so that's what it looks like if you add a little too much white. Like you can see on this one, I mean, they're just way too bright. It doesn't really match. And this one right here, I didn't smear it enough, so it just kind of still looks dabbed around. So what you can do is go back to the gray wash, okay? And just wash over the whole thing, and it'll kind of blend it all together. So you want to make sure you get it pretty wet, and then uh, just go over it. And then, you know, you're kind of looking through the gray into your white highlights and then your darker black spots and it'll help blend it and make it look a lot better let me do it to this one kind of see what it'll turn into and then you can also go back let's say if this is a little too light you could add a little more of your uh, dark highlights and the dark spots again if you want or even more white and you just kind of go back and forth or if you liked how it looked after you added your white you can just leave it alone like that but anyway i'll let this dry and then i will show you what this looks like after I've added the wash over the black and the white. All right, so this is what the boards look like after I applied that wash. I let it dry and then I did a little of the black on this one again and then I highlighted this one with some white, just a little bit more. So the last thing you can do is take a piece of sandpaper or even a sanding sponge, and I think this is about a 150 grit, and just run it along the grain of the wood. And what this is going to do is make some of that wood pop through underneath, okay? You can really see it on this one. See how it's showing through? I think that this gives it a lot more realistic look, so it doesn't just look like the whole thing has been painted over or whatever. But anyway, that's a pretty cool look. That's how I would do barn wood. Um, and like I said, if you do a Google search, you can kind of get an idea. Some boards are going to be a lot lighter than others. You could go a lot, you know, lighter gray than I did. And then maybe just do a gray instead of a black highlight on some of them, okay? And then others, they could be almost white. And I think if you mix them up, it'll look pretty real. So there you go. That's a really simple way to do barn wood. It's not exactly realistic, but it looks pretty good, especially for as simple as this process is.